Good evening. Welcome to the Year 6 virtual open evening. My name is Joe and I'm in my final year of A-levels here at Highcliffe. I can't believe I'll be leaving next year. And I'm alright as Sarah. Hello all. Like Joe just said, I am Sarah. Um, I'm in Year 10 where I've just started my GCSEs and I'm not as high as Joe but I am working my way up there. We'd now like to pass over to our head teacher, Mr Earnshaw, where he will take the lead. Hello, I'm Patrick Earnshaw. I have the privilege and the pleasure of being the head teacher of Highcliffe School. Um, I'll explain to you uh, in my part of the presentation uh, about the values and the ethos of the school and give you an insight into the nature of our curriculum and the opportunities that we offer students uh, who come here for their education. Uh, the motto of our school is displayed on the screen. Um, we value the power of education to change lives. Um, that phrase captures everything uh, that the school believes about education and it informs everything that, that myself and all of my colleagues do um, in, in our day-to-day -day working lives at the school. The reasons why that is the school's motto are twofold. Uh, firstly, that uh, a good quality education really does have the power to change people's lives. Uh, and secondly, because that statement is, is very much um, a manifestation of my experience as a child. Um, I, was, I was born into quite challenging circumstances. I spent the first 18 months of my life in a hostel for the homeless. I grew up in uh, a single parent family in council housing uh, in two different parts of the country. And uh, I, I had an incredibly supportive mum who believed in me and what I might be able to achieve. Um, but on its own, uh, that's not enough. Uh, what I was lucky enough to experience was uh, access to an education in comprehensive schools um, that was of a very good quality and I was able to, to be inspired by a number of the teachers um, who educated me during my time at school. And so um, this, this ethos of the school um, about valuing education, changing lives really is an expression of my own personal beliefs. Um, as well as the beliefs uh, of, of all of my colleagues who work in the school. And um, we're all dedicated um, to making um, the power of education a reality in our students' lives. Highcliffe is a very special place to learn. Every school community is unique in its, in its own way, um, but Highcliffe, uh, I've worked in lots of different schools around the country, and I, I can say with absolute authority that Highcliffe is an incredibly special place to learn. It's a unique and very special community. Um, our, our ethos um, is unique. Um, we are an incredibly positive uh, and optimistic organisation for our students. Um, we care deeply about our students. We offer them uh, a great deal of support, emotional support, practical support, academic support. Uh, and we very much focus on encouraging students to do their best. Um, but we're not just caring and supportive. Uh, we're also extremely aspirational and we have very high expectations. Um, we want the young people who come to our school to develop into really well-rounded and successful young adults who will go on into, into full adulthood and lead very successful lives. And I think the values that we promote in our students are those that any parent would want for their child. Um, so we promote amongst our students the importance of being respectful of others and their needs, uh, to be purposeful and hardworking, uh, to be responsible, to understand that we're part of a community and as well as having rights we have responsibilities to others around us, to be caring towards each other, to be open-minded um, about new experiences, open-minded about different people, uh, to be tolerant, uh, tolerant of diversity, tolerant of other people's um, failings or, or situations and uh, above all else to be positive and optimistic. We expect students here to work very hard um, whether it is our dress code um, or, or through our behaviour expectations of students or our expectations of them as learners, um, uh, we expect them to do their very best at all times. Um, it works. If, uh, if exam results are, are a primary motivator for your choice of a secondary school for your son or daughter, then I can reassure you that our ethos and the nature of our school um, uh, works extremely well in terms of exam results. Um, the 
between 2018 and 2021. You can see some figures on the screen that give you an indication of just what a high performing school we are and how well our students do. Um, our typically every single year group achieves uh, GCSE results well above the national average um, and uh, results that in value added terms, um, so from students starting points when they leave Key Stage 2, are also very positive. It's the same story in our sixth form. Um, intrinsic to the identity of our school is that we are an 11 to 18 school. Over a similar period, our sixth form, was in, according to various performance measures, um, uh, has uh, frequently been in the top 10% of sixth forms nationally, uh, either overall or for specific subjects or courses that we run. Um, 16 students since 2010 have gained admissions either to Oxford or to Cambridge University. Um, we have outstanding opportunities for personal development in our sixth form, which really are only the sixth form expression of similar opportunities we provide our students lower down in the school through our enrichment programme. And we have bespoke support for university and apprenticeship applications. For example, our aspirant medics programme or our aspirant law programme, um, or the increasing focus that we're putting on helping students um, uh, gain access to, to the very best advanced apprenticeships at the age of 18 um, and to degree apprenticeships. Uh, for Key Stage 3, <coughs> uh, the foundation of everything we do is our curriculum. Uh, we have a very broad and absorbing curriculum which all students pursue. Um, you can see the subjects that are in the Key Stage 3 curriculum on the screen. Um, so whether that's English language and literature, or it's dance, uh, or it's product design, or electronics, or robotics, uh, chemistry, modern languages, art, music, all students pursue a very broad curriculum. And that's really because it's essential to us that in the first three years of students being at the school, they get a very, very thorough, well-rounded education um, that equips them with you know, uh, uh, really important knowledge and understanding that they would take into their adult lives, irrespective of what they then choose to do at GCSE and A-level. So the first three years of secondary school really matter to us. and um, We're not an exam factory, just preparing students for GCSE and A-level success. But when students do come to their GCSE options choices in year nine, we have an even broader curriculum to offer. Um, whether that's theatre studies uh, at A-level, which is the evolution from drama at, at GCSE, or economics or business studies or computing, philosophy and ethics, politics and government. Um, we, as a large uh, and high performing secondary school, we are in the privileged position of being able to offer a very wide range of subjects that mean that any student can find uh, in their options choices at Key Stage 4 or Key Stage 5 a range of subjects which really infuse and motivate them um, as well as educating them and opening their minds. Um, but wrapped around that we also have an exceptional extracurricular programme open to all students and this is one of the things that really um, in my experience, differentiates Highcliffe School from other schools. Just to give you some examples, um, obviously nearly all of these were, were suspended during the pandemic period, um, but to give you some examples of the kind of experience that we offer students outside the classroom, uh, these range from visiting the Chalk Valley History Festival, which has, has become one of the most prestigious international history uh, festivals um, in the world, um, for, for our young historians. Our Japanese exchange, we, we have a very, very long-term link with Johoku High School in Hiroshima. Um, they send uh, students to us um, every year and every two years or so, we send students out to, to live with a Japanese family and attend that school. That's an extraordinary experience uh, for a young person to have. Um, it might be the sixth form trip to Iceland or the year eight and nine World War I battlefields trip, which uh, is a trip I've, I've taken students on several times and is an unforgettable experience. I would use that trip as an example of the way this school really tries to personalise the experience that every single child who comes to the school can have. And uh, what I mean by that is it's very common for schools to, to run a battlefields trip 
Um, but so far, as far as I'm aware, we're the only school who run that trip um, with the intention of ensuring that students can look up any ancestors they have, uh, typically now great-grandparents or even great-great-grandparents, um, who may have died in the fighting on the Somme or Reap. And if a family is able to, to research and find their ancestor, then we make the commitment to find their grave or their name on the memorial as part of that trip. Um, and that's really because we value every child and every family and the experience that we can offer them. Uh, but we also have a huge range of opportunities available uh, during and after the school day. And uh, those opportunities are available as, student, as soon as students arrive in year seven. They range from the, the Warhammer Club uh, or Dungeons and Dragons uh, to things like the Oxbridge programme that, that begins uh, higher up the school but also a wealth of music clubs, some of which are indicated on here. We have uh, a very well-developed uh, music uh, culture in school, supported by the head teacher's scholarship, of which I'll say more in a moment. Uh, but we have orchestras, wind bands, uh, brass bands, uh, choirs, uh, jamming clubs, uh, Cubase, which, which um, is uh, sound engineering, computer programming, ukulele, guitar, we have creative writing, chess club is extremely popular uh, as well. We have girls football, boys football, girls rugby, boys rugby, mixed netball, uh, as well as girls netball, dance, drama, uh, and so much more. One of the things that also helps make Highcliffe unique in terms of anything I've experienced in a, a state secondary school is that we have an equestrian team. Uh, we're lucky that uh, a, a proportion of our catchments is uh, in the New Forest, and uh, so we, we have a substantial number of young people very enthusiastic about equestrian sports, and although we don't have stables or horses ourselves, um, our young people are very keen to represent the school and uh, doing something that they enjoy, so we have a Highcliffe School equestrian team um, who represent the school in school colours, uh, as you can see Tarka doing uh, uh, so brilliantly. Uh, on the screen now, and that's an extremely successful school team uh, competing uh, locally, regionally and nationally and, uh, uh, and from, drawn from all age ranges across the school and has, has, has included, uh, in the, even in the very recent past, um, in the sixth form, students who are actually also selected to compete for Team GB. We have head teacher scholarships for music. M many schools have, have uh, run down their music provision in the last few years uh, with tight budgets and changes to the curriculum. We've done the opposite. Um, our, the number of students at Highcliffe choosing to take uh, peripatetic music lessons, specialist music lessons, has trebled. Um, we have around 90 students doing that this year. And uh, we also offer the Head Teacher Scholarship for Music, which is uh, specifically aimed at students uh, who want to, who are already learning or who are keen to learn and excel in traditional orchestral instruments um, because we know that um, those instruments are the ones that are at risk um, in terms of uh, increasingly few young people uh, taking those instruments up. Uh, uh, any, any year seven who already plays an instrument and may be keen to, to take up an orchestral instrument or is already um, learning uh, through their grade exams and orchestral instruments is welcome to apply for the Head Teacher Scholarship for Music and there is more information about that um, available online uh, in Mr Bannister's talk about that. And uh, of course I would say these things about the school. Um, I'm its head teacher. Um, I love the school. I'm incredibly proud of the school. Um, I believe wholeheartedly in the school's mission. And, uh, but I think it's important that you also hear from students um, who experience the education that the school has had to offer so I'm going to hand you back to Sarah and to Joe for them to give you an insight into, into what it's like being a Highcliffe School student. I can remember being where you are seven years ago, feeling excited but nervous about moving up from primary. Worrying about getting lost, finding my locker and most importantly, what sort of food they serve in the canteen. However, I can tell you that despite all my worries, I soon settled in. Everyone from the teachers to the peer mentors are here to make you feel at home and find your way around. When I first joined all those years ago, I wasn't athletic or particularly fit. I played a bit of football, but nothing much. It wasn't until Mr. Dean asked me to be on the rugby team that I even considered it. I went along 
thought whatever. Fast forward a few years, and I've been on it throughout my years at Highcliffe. It really helped me grow as a person and give me confidence and fitness. But don't worry, if sport isn't your thing, we have many other clubs, these being drama productions and tech clubs. There really is something for everybody. So, going on from what Joe has just said, um, I'm going to share something a bit more personal about my experience as a Highcliffe student. Um, I think the, the best thing about this school is the opportunities that it has to offer that really allow you to develop who you are and figure out the path you want to continue on. I started off by choosing citizenship, history and religion, philosophy and ethics for my GCSE options. And recently I changed one of my options, religion, philosophy and ethics, to graphic design. Not because the subject wasn't great and I wasn't enjoying the content, but because deep down I knew that I wasn't being true to myself and I wasn't giving myself enough of a mix. Um, I know that I love my academic subjects, but I wanted to give attention to the artistic side of me and obviously take advantage of our pride and joy here at Highcliffe Da Vinci, which is an ambient place to be in, always radiating with ambience and giving you a sense of relaxation. Um, really, I just wanted to keep my options open for the future and take advantage of everything that this school has to offer. I don't think that without the teachers at this school and the arts department, I would have ever be been able to make that sort of decision. I wouldn't have ever been able to um, make such a decision that would really change me. The school has many opportunities, left, right, up, down, wherever you go, whether you want to be an engineer, uh, an equestrian like Mr. Angel has just talked about, or whether you want to be an athlete, it has everything to offer to you and even if you don't know, you will be able to find out that you do enjoy something. So, on top of that, an amazing feature that Highcliffe School has is its teachers. Honestly, going back to my options story, I was mostly scared about what my head of year, Mr. Goddard, would say. Um, after sitting down with him, the immediate response was whether I was doing what was best for me and if I was doing what was best for myself, that, that he had absolutely no problem with it. I looked really highly upon him and I didn't want to disappoint him, but that didn't happen because of the support that he gave me through that alongside all of the teachers. And that really gives you a moral boost to make you realise that you are doing the right thing by choosing the best. Highcliffe gives you a sense of independence. It's good at taking a primary school student and turning them into an independent thinker for the future. I remember in year seven that we were, I was repeatedly told by Mr. Yap or Miss Pearson, our head of year at the time, that no question is a bad question. We must always feed into our curiosity and that really stuck with me and I've kept that with myself. And throughout my experience, I've been able to answer a million things to myself. And it may be a bit extreme for me to say that I have found myself at this school, but I know that it is an extreme to say that I've made a decision for myself that I know I will never regret. So I'm just going to pass back to Joe, who's going to tell you more about his experiences. So leaning on from what Sarah said, I thought I might tell you about my time here at Highcliffe. I've already mentioned my change in attitude to sport, which is actually really quite transformational for me. But now I might talk about academics. I had the support and opportunity to learn about subjects I've never even heard of before. One of which being food tech with Miss Leach, who is passionate about food and nutrition. I really loved her classes, however my favourite part was eating it at the end. My favourite thing would have been donuts. The trick was heat the oil just to the right temperature. Speaking of Miss Leach, she was my tutor for the first, for the first three years and on occasion would bring, on a, bring us in freshly baked goodies I can tell you that it was a very good way to start the Monday. In year nine, I was fortunate to be a part of the student exchange fr program to France. This is where you go live with a French student for a week and they come live with you. I can tell you, in that week, my mum used Google Translate more than she's ever done in her whole life. We really got a good flavor for France. This was because of the activities the teachers set us. One of these being a music festival. Yeah, a music festival in year nine. There were so many different bands playing all sorts of music, and I can tell you that the churros were to die for. This is just one example of many trips available here at Highcliffe that would change your life and give you memories you'll never forget. So after what Joe has just said, I can definitely agree with him and say that he is definitely not wrong. I think that what, after what we both have just said, we may sound like we are trying to auction the school off to you, but I promise that we aren't. 
we are just trying to show you the opportunities that you can have at this school and it's because Highcliffe is a great place to give you um, a sense of achievement for yourself. I remember when I was at the open evening, I was sat down looking out up to the head boy and head girl at the time giving their speeches and here I am talking to you guys virtually. Um, I was thinking to myself, wow, I really want to achieve something like they have and after almost four great years at this school, I've been able through the support of the teachers and my hard work to get up to here. Um, I think that what Highcliffe is good at is allowing you to develop your character and develop yourself as a person to mature a lot. And I think that we just wanted to share, you our, ex share our experiences with you about what it is like to be a Highcliffe student. It's been a pleasure sharing our experience with you. I'll now pass you over to Mrs Pearson. Hello everybody, um, my name is Mrs Pearson and I'm Head of Achievement for Year 7. I just wanted to take the opportunity of talking through uh, the progression now from Year 6 into Year 7 with some key dates. So in October there will be Year 6 class visits, um, moving forward then your applications will be in and school places will be confirmed to you by March 2022. Admissions appeals take place from April to July so do please if you're unsuccessful first time around do uh, go through the appeals process. Mr Earnshaw will talk to you a little bit about that later. Um, from May to June, we liaise with the primary school uh, teachers and basically we are gathering key information about your children to make sure that their transition into Highcliffe School is as successful and fluid and stress-free as possible. In July, we have Year 6 Induction Day, giving the students a flavour of what life at Highcliffe School is like. In August, we are hoping, if the funding is available, to um, put on a summer school as we did this year that was hugely successful and made the transition period for 75 students very, very easy indeed. So, fingers crossed that will happen. In September, your children will join us here for their very first day at Highcliffe School. On that day, it would just be Year 7 and Year 12 in the school giving the students the opportunity to get to know their way around, to get the feel for the place, to meet their tutors, uh, find their lockers, and generally just have that day without the full complement of students that we have here. Um, we have a themed induction programme for the students when they join us for the first half term, uh, and our focus is on making sure that they are very comfortable with being a Highcliffe student, that they have learnt how to be organised and, most importantly, that they are making friends. A very, very important date in our calendar is the Year 7 Welcome Disco and uh, the current one that we had on the 14th was absolutely fantastic. The vibe was electric. It was just absolutely wonderful to see the students having that opportunity to be with their new friends and have a great time. Uh, we also have a freshers fair, which is um, all of the clubs, uh, including all the PE clubs. But as Mr. Earnshaw told you, the extracurricular programme here at Highcliffe is quite extensive. So we have clubs so that we can make sure that your students know about all of the opportunities that are available to them, and then they can join those clubs. In October, we have an exclusive evening for Year 7 parents and that is the evening that they can meet the tutor and talk through how their child has settled in to Highcliffe School. So, as you know, we are a respectful, purposeful and responsible school. Um, so we have a strong transition and induction into uh, the Highcliffe School ethos. We have a particular program that teaches them how to be respectful, purposeful and responsible Highcliffe students because our expectations are of course very high as you would want. Um, we do make sure that they understand what is expected of them through going through the rewards and behaviour policies um, and making sure they know how to earn commendations and generally meet our expectations. There are other, lots of other things that we do within the programme, 
Uh, for example, one of the things that um, I do is elect and work with Year Council representatives who are the voice of Year 7. Uh, we have topical assemblies and because we are a Year 7 community, we have a very strong focus on charity and we do have instituted challenges where we are encouraging the students to fundraise and we hope to give our funds, our charity contributions to the wider community. For example, the Macmillan Christchurch unit that is local to us and also we have given over £700 to Dorset Mind who are working with young people in our area. So, we also are very, very privileged to have all of our tutor bases in the Da Vinci building. Uh, we have a specialist Year 7 team of tutors, that all of the staff that are on our Year 7 tutor team are very, very experienced. We also have a dedicated pastoral lead to Year 7, as well as a Deputy Head of Achievement and myself as Head of Achievement. Uh, tutors, um, myself, pastoral lead and the Deputy Head of Achievement are available every day in Da Vinci so that your children can approach us with anything that they need to speak to us about first thing in the morning. So we are building a Year 7 community. We start the day in probably one of the greatest buildings in the school, really creative and innovative displays as they walk in the building, getting their brains exposed to some really uh, thought-provoking uh, artwork and setting them up for the rest of the day. Thank you for listening. So I, I hope you found uh, the insight uh, that, that myself, Mrs Pearson, Sarah and Joe have given you into the school in an, an informative one. And uh, I do need to just uh, finish uh, the presentation talking about admissions. And uh, our admissions number is 264. And our admissions number has grown in, in recent years um, as the, the local population in the area that the school serves has grown, but also we've become a uh, more popular um, uh, choice uh, from other schools and from other areas, and indeed an increasing number of people moving into the area. Um, we are oversubscribed in, in Year 7 uh, every year, frequently really quite heavily oversubscribed. And what I mean by that is that we we would have more than 264 students admitted in the end, um, uh, which, which happens on, on appeal. Uh, and we might typically have anywhere between 40 uh, and 80 students on a waiting list for a place. Um, when you apply for a place at Highcliffe School, it's important that you do not apply directly to the school. You use your local authorities um, admissions service, whether that's BCP, Dorset, Hampshire, um, or whether you're moving into the area and you're applying from further afield. Um, the application deadline is always the 31st of October. It is very important that you submit your application on time because applications submitted after the 31st of October are not considered um, uh, in the first round of places and you won't be offered a school place. Um, uh, I, that will only be dealt with later. Um, the, the outcome of your, your application for school places, uh, you're informed of that on the 1st of March. And uh, if you're not offered a place um, at Highfield School um, in that first round of admissions, um, I can only encourage you to, to remain on the waiting list. Contact Mrs Heathman um, at the school, our admissions officer. Remain on the waiting list and, uh, and really uh, emphasise the importance of appealing. Um, it is an independent appeal process. Um, uh, it's, it's not my decision or the governing body's decision about admitting uh, students on appeal um, over our admissions number. Um, but, but typically every year the independent panels do to admit a number of students uh, on top of the 264 uh, places or, or already allocated. Um, that's something that you need to consider carefully. Certainly if you appeal, um, you have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. Um, so remember those important dates. Um, uh, I hope that you uh, feel that you've had a, a useful insight into the school and indeed that the things you've heard about the school um, inspire and motivate you in the way that they inspire and motivate me and my colleagues. It, it really is a very special community, this school, and I emphasise the fact that it's a community. Uh, we really believe in that 
um, creating a sense of community among students, um, being connected to our local, our national and our international community. Um, if you do choose Highcliffe School um, uh, for your secondary school education, then um, uh, it would be an absolute pleasure to be given the responsibility to educate your son and daughter. Um, my colleagues and I will dedicate ourselves to that task. Um, it means everything to us um, to give our students a rigorous education and provide them with care and support and opportunities to, to develop uh, themselves as individuals and excel. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for listening. Um, really appreciate the time that you devoted to this. And uh, I hope to get to know uh, many of you students um, and parents um, uh, after the end of the admissions round. Thank you.